My name is Brent Ferguson. I'm representing a uh, musician for an anti-racist college, Mark. Um, thank you for all for attending today. So I would like, especially like to thank the KU departments of theater and dance, special education, design, education administration, physics and astronomy, American studies, psychology, French Francophone and Italian studies, women, gender and sexuality, history, political science and sociology, as well as the graduate student organization, Professionals for Social Justice for helping promote this series. The Lunch Lecture Series is a collaborative effort between Midwest Music Research Collective or MMRC and Musicians for an Anti-Racist College. Together, we hope this series will inspire new ways of knowing and spark dialogue. MMRC is a graduate student group that focuses on providing opportunities for graduate students in and out of KU. MARC is a community action group that seeks to act against racist, exploitative, and patriarchal practices while facilitating spaces for decolonial thought within music studies. If anyone here is interested in joining MMRC or MARC or has questions, you may contact the email uh, posted in the chat, and I will make sure your information gets to the right person. So um, yeah, now once again, thank you for attending. Um, allow me a little bit more time to introduce our speaker today. And I'm so happy to be introducing this speaker. Uh, our speaker today is Jasmine Henry. And um, Jasmine Henry is a musicology PhD candidate at Rutgers University and pre-doctoral fellow at William Patterson University. Her dissertation, Jersey Club, Race, Place, and Black Independent Music Production in Newark, uh, New Jersey, focuses on contemporary issues of race, place, music, technology, and sound in the local club music scene. As a live sound engineer, she has entertained international audiences through her work on critically acclaimed productions such as The Blue Man Group and HBO's The Newsroom. Henry currently serves as the media lab director at the New York School of Arts, where she provides marginalized youth, youth with access to music technologies and industry and knowledge. Uh, our presentation today is titled Occupy the Block, a Jersey Club Music Performance and Black Party Activism. And please, ready your clapping emojis and your hands and give a round of applause for Jasmine Henry. All right, thank you all so much. Thank you for that wonderful introduction and I'm happy to be with you here today. Um, so what I'm going to present is work from my fourth dissertation chapter entitled Club Music in the Community, Jersey Club Performance as Black Party, Act Black Party Activism. Um, all right, let's get started. So Jersey Club is a subgenre of house music that originated among working class black urban youth in Newark, New Jersey in the early 2000s. The subgenre is distinguished by a distinctive syncopated kick drum pattern, breakneck tempos ranging from 130 to 180 beats per minute, prominent sub bass frequencies, heavily chopped and manipulated audio samples, and footwork centric black social dance moves. The following video features those aforementioned elements. We're not against rap. We're not against rappers. But we are against those thugs. From the relentless syncopated bass thumping out of cars to teens spontaneously dancing on the streets, Jersey club music is an omnipresent and inextricable part of Newark's contemporary soundscape. Tracing these vibrant sounds, movements, and people in and around Newark was a dizzying experience 
and exhilarating ethnographic challenge. From June 2019 to October 2021, I observed and participated in numerous Jersey club centric events, including dance battles, festivals, 21 plus club nights and block parties. Due to a lack of nightclub venues in the city, these diverse and dynamic events often occurred in the middle of public parks, dance studios, neighborhoods and downtown city streets. Some events occurred in broad daylight while others capitalized on late night aesthetics. Do this ethnography, I provide a perspective of contemporary club music unbounded by time and space, yet grounded in the rhythms and routines of everyday Black life, a counter to prevailing white EDM historiographies that often depict clubbing as a utopian nightlife ephemerality serving as an escape from everyday life. Drawn from the field of performance studies, I ask, what happens when Jersey Club happens in Newark? Specifically, I ask, what happens as the sounds of Jersey Club are circulated and embodied during these performances? In recent years, several music scholars have demonstrated how the circulation of sound through independent music making has positively restructured the lives and environments of marginalized populations. Notably, ethnomusicologist Christina Zanfania shows how in the wake of the 1990s LA riots, Black Christian rappers converted street corners into open air churches and used gospel rap production to navigate complex socioeconomic and spiritual tensions, thus transforming a fractured city into a site of dynamic cultural production and healing. What I find significant about her work is that it sought not to merely define what these cultural practices were, but illuminate how musical performance enabled to step systemically disadvantaged and misrepresented people to restructure their lives. I also find musicologist Kira Gaunt and Guthrie Ramsey's work on Black cultural memory, family dynamics, and embodied musical practices as helpful in theorizing how Black people use music to negotiate the seemingly mundane realities of everyday life by transforming everyday places like parks, playgrounds, and family dinner tables into sites of catharsis, recovery, play, and pleasure. Reminiscent of early hip hop history, parties in public areas lay at the foundation of everyday Jersey club music culture. These dance battles, block parties, and festivals are often joyous events that produce and celebrate locality, cultural vitality, and urban intimacy through shared music, dance, and, reflect and refreshments. In these spaces, Black urban residents are offered temporary relief from the socio-political and economic challenges of living in a highly racialized, gendered, and class city like Newark. However, through my many conversations with Black partiers, I noticed that these parties are not just temporary moments of celebration and relaxation. Considering the way that Black urban people in the United States are regularly threatened by high rates of neighborhood homicide, state-sanctioned violence, and forces of neoliberalization and gentrification, New York residents occupying urban public space is an inherently political act. I began to read these street events as community mobilizations where black urban residents articulate and negotiate their bodies, identities, collective experiences, and cultural wealth to navigate the intersectional challenges of black urban life. Several other scholars have demonstrated how black party cultures have meaning and significance well beyond their entertainment function. Notably black music and dance scholars, Katrina Hazard Gordon and Mark Anthony Neal demonstrate how black juke joints, honky tonks and rent parties functioned as important 20th century spaces for black sociability, sanctuary and alternative economic activity for marginalized populations excluded from the dominant society. Furthermore, hip hop scholars Jeff Chang and Kevin Holt have illuminated how black parties in New York and Atlanta served, served as a form of collective performative catharsis and political resistance. Similarly, I have found that in Newark, parties are an essential way black government authorities and everyday residents compensate for a lack of structural resources and opportunities in the city. To theorize the significance of everyday club music making and its role in black party cultures, I offer the term black party activism as a descriptor for a form of critical community grassroots intervention that uses black place making and cultural expressive practices to occupy urban public space and create sites of opportunity for marginalized communities. Drawn from participant observation, analyses of YouTube videos, and in-depth interviews, I present analyses of dance battle and block party events 
to show how Jersey Club music constitutes an important aspect of Black Party activism in Newark and surrounding urban localities. I argue that Jersey Club music functions as a form of sonic intervention that enables Black urban residents to negotiate the politics of contemporary urban space and produce politicized sites of community building, opportunity, and empowerment. I frame Jersey Club event organizers as DIY urban planners who strategically use Jersey Club music and cultural wealth assets to negotiate urban spaces, institutions, and residents in pursuit of their creative, political, and entrepreneurial goals. Through these means, I present a bottom-up geographic perspective that makes their political work visible and links these politics to the long-term sustenance of the city. So in this first section, I will present work from a dance battle event. And in the second section, I'll present work from a political event featuring Jersey Club music. The hashtag link up dance battle series began in 2018, pioneered by Fitch, an entrepreneurial Newark native and fierce advocate of the Jersey Club music scene. For the local youth, the battles create a safe space for them to link up with each other and express themselves through music and dance. For those with entertainment industry aspirations, it is an important opportunity for them to share their latest productions, develop entertainment industry skills, and build a loyal fan base. Every other Tuesday during the warm summer months, masses of Black Newark youth occupy Conant Park in neighboring Hillside, New Jersey, to cheer on the best dancers in the area as they battle to Jersey Club music. Hurry up! <laughs> to me in this video is the dynamic and reciprocal relationship between the music battlers and audience. I see these performances more as community jam sessions that provide Black urban youth with lessons on how they can collectively and productively navigate the dynamics of everyday life and space. For hours, the Jersey Club sound floods Conant Park, grounded by the relentless repetition of the Jersey Club kick pattern, serving as a connecting point between each of the songs played during the event. Tom ethnomusicologist Thomas Torino notes that simple yet incessant rhythms like the Jersey Club beat provide participants with a sense of social security, intimacy, and confidence. I find this musical consistency um, enabling the dancers, DJs, and spectators to move and sound in synchrony, muscularly bonding and mentally connecting with each other through shared music and dance practices. However, like in real life, there is a great degree of rupture in between each battle performance, a factor not visible in these dynamically edited videos. In between each battle, the music ceases as dancers communicate the battle songs to the DJs, which allows the audience time to calm down from their excitement. This means that each battler must perform crowd-pleasing dance elements with a high energy level to return the crowd to peak performance levels. Once the dancers I, one of the dancers I interviewed revealed the significant amount of outside practice he's devoted just toward mastering the core Jersey Club dance moves, just, such as the Joffy Rock. <laughs> and the Jersey Rock. 
There's a distinct bounce to all of these moves, but also a sharpness, meaning the dancers have to internalize very nuanced rhythms and timings. On top of that, during performances, dancers must negotiate between different body rhythms and motions at a rapid rate, as having range is a highly valued aspect of battling. Can you be cool, sexy, smooth, aggressive, a little awkward and goofy, all within the space of a couple of minutes? While I was blown away by every move, the audience seemed like they were evaluating and responding to the battles using a distinct set of criteria. Over time, I observed, the origin I observed that originality, theatricality, and energy are the values that produce the most enthusiastic audience response. In this video, notice how the pantomimed improvised moves rather than the core Jersey club elements receive the most praise from the audience. The impact of these theatrical moves is greatly enhanced when the dancer precisely synchronizes them with the intricately chopped audio samples, which suggests that dancers are expected to know the music intimately as well. The core dance moves are a means to, the, to an end, serving as connecting points that allow the dancers to stay in constant motion and providing them with a foundation to contribute their own moves. In this next video, watch as the dancers move and sound in synchrony, occasionally hitting dance moves together. You'll rarely see an awkward transition as they seamlessly exchange positions within the performance space, for they are in dialogue, signifying through dance, responding to each other with humorous, boastful, insulting, and provocative kinetic commentary. X is a comedy. If you're a parent, it is the scariest of all movies. While these battles are competitive in nature, they are not driven by hatred or vitriol. Rather, they are energized by passion and joy. In fact, there is no actual winner crowned at the end of the event, supporting the notion that these battles are truly about connecting with others, as reflected in the name, hashtag Link Up Tuesdays, and challenging everyone in attendance to seize opportunities, make the most out of every situation, and empower each other. In addition to the circulation and embodiment of these sounds, Black entrepreneurship is, is central to the success of these dynamic events. Although Fitch is the founder of the series, he is just one of several savvy hashtag Link Up Tuesday event organizers, or as I see them, DIY urban planners. Hosting the battles provides these planners with opportunities to develop professional and entrepreneurial skills. I watched as these community leaders, some high school students and others internationally recognized club DJs transformed into MCs, video production specialists, sound engineers, merchandisers, 
and social media coordinators, all in the service of keeping the event running smoothly and safely. These DIY urban planners, independent placemaking and entrepreneurial practices are an example of how marginalized community members gain entertainment industry skills in their everyday lives, despite their limited access to institutionalized entertainment industry learning opportunities and resources. They are also an example of how these ambitious Newark natives are not hapless, helpless victims of urban circumstance. Rather, they are DIY urban planners that take great pride in the social organization they provide to the scene, a direct counter of mainstream media portrayals of Newark that center on narratives of urban chaos and crisis. In all my time participating in the battles, I wondered why I rarely saw police at these events. It struck me as odd considering how we usually discuss the hyper surveillance of black and brown communities in our mainstream media and academic discourse. I came to learn that the lack of police involvement is not by coincidence, but by design. There's a lot at stake when black urban youth gather to do something as innocuous seeming as dancing in public space. As noted by several scholars, Black popular music making has historically been met with a considerable degree of suspicious, suspicion in the United States. It is often seen as an outward manifestation of what the late Bell Hooks calls an outlaw culture that is perceived as dangerous, if not outrightly criminal. With this in mind, Fitch has worked diligently with the city and county officials to secure the correct permits for each event navigate the risk and safety issues of each public space and convince the authorities that the hashtag link up Tuesday events serve as a positive and productive means for black urban youth in the city. By doing so, Fitch provides the city with a model for how to host public urban youth activities that do not get coded as criminalized behavior. Overall, through these processes of negotiation, occupation and battle, Conant Park was transformed into a sanctuary space for Black urban youth, community building, and uninhibited expression. What I find sal salient is that the Dance Battle series is about more than just promoting music and showing off dance moves. It serves a broader purpose of empowering Black urban youth as living in an overtly racialized and disadvantaged city has made these participants hyper aware of the negative stereotypes and systemic injustices leveled against them. It is important to recognize that they knowingly and purposefully harness the power of their Black independent cultural production practices to make meaningful changes in their Black urban spaces. For this next portion, I will discuss a political based event that appropriates Jersey Club music. In 2015, Mayor Raj J. Baraka enacted a new grassroots political initiative entitled Occupy the Block, a traveling block party event designed to reduce violence in the city one neighborhood at a time. Inspired by the Occupy protest movement of the 2010s in which average citizens rallied against socioeconomic inequality through the occupation of public spaces and private businesses, Contemporary Newark politicians and community leaders have purposefully transformed public parties into politicized sites of community building, opportunity, and empowerment. Mayor Baraka quickly implemented the program after Al Shaquem Woodson, a 15-year-old boy, was shot and killed on Mother's Day, an event that outraged the community. About three times a week during the warm months, the mayor and members of his administration set up recreational activities and information booths on shut down neighborhood blocks that recently experienced crime and violence. What I find interesting about this event is how it represents a top down government application of a bottom up grassroots strategy designed to directly address the needs of its, its citizens. Similarly to Fitch, the mayor is calling upon the community to take action in reclaiming the streets from gangs and produce positive social change. Guided by a broader heteropatriarchal ideology, Mayor Baraka associates these issues of crime and violence with a lack of opportunities for young Black men in the city. What I noticed is that the opportunity is often seen as a form of currency in the city, and as noted before, most party activism efforts aim to compensate a lack of structural opportunity through these politicized gatherings. 
As a result of deindustrialization, racialized poverty, and neoliberal urban renewal projects, Newark has a living history of chronic Black underemployment and residents being disrupted and dislocated by patterns of gentrification that tempt wealthy investors but deplete local communities of traditional forms of social and economic capital. By creating a platform that encourages the community to voice their concerns, Mayor Baraka aims to unite residents against despair and hope and reor reorient their energies toward creating intimacy and hope in their communities. The initial block parties were de designed to engage an older crowd of Black men, but residents expressed that they wanted events to draw in a younger crowd, leading the mayor to incorporate musical performances into the parties. In the spring of 2021, Mayor Baraka reached out to DJ Little Man to coordinate a block party series focused on engaging the youth entitled Occupy the Block, the youth tour. DJ Little Man is one of the pioneering Jersey Club DJs who helped the subgenre achieve mainstream recognition in the early 2000s. For DJ Little Man, this event resonates deeply with his personal experience dealing with reoccurring issues of violence at parties in the early Jersey Club music scene history. Notably, in 2008, he was shot in the left forearm as he was promoting for an upcoming party at what he calls the wrong place and time, leaving his hand temporarily paralyzed. For these reasons, DJ Little Man has dedicated a significant amount of time and resources to empower the youth through Jersey club music and dance, making him an ideal ambassador for the mayor. What I find interesting about these events is how they make the community both visible and audible through more official means than the hashtag Link Up Tuesday events. Early in the afternoon, members of the Team Little Man crew, the DJ's hired helpers, began setting up carnival games, barbecue grills, and DJ equipment, all sponsored by the mayor's office. Police officers backed, blocked off the roads with bright yellow caution tape and parked their flashing vehicles at the end of the street. Within an hour, the mostly beige and brown multifamily homes in the neighborhood were obscured by the bright blue colors of the inflatable bouncy houses, smoke from the grill, and blue tents covering various information and equipment booths. I read the installation of these bright and bold visual aesthetics as a means by which the mayor communicates to communities that have experienced violence and that they have not been forgotten or about or neglected. Furthermore, putting this visual spotlight on the community compels the residents to come out into the streets and take ownership over their blocks. However, while the bright aesthetics drew some families out of the house, I observed that most of the neighbors came out into the street when DJ Little Man got behind the turntables. He generally starts each event by playing top 40 hip hop and R&B tracks, allowing community members to investigate the block party's offerings. After he welcomes the community to the block party, he quickly makes place by playing classic house music, a genre that activates the cultural memory and pride of many new, new workers, especially among older residents who love to pass down stories about epic club nights at the legendary club Zanzibar in the 1980s. It is the sounds of club music that brings members out of, into the streets to connect with each other and other members of the mayor's administration. Gatherings like these offer face-to-face -face interactions that are important for building trust with others in an environment where people care for one another through times of trauma and uncertainty. Parents and caretakers are offered respite during the block party as carnival games entertain the children and all members of the community keep an eye out on the youth, providing a safe environment and much needed break from the demands of everyday life. I am reminded of the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child and see this event as playing a significant role in village building. DJ Little Man takes on the role of community caregiver by, giving, by providing direction to the children to get food and games, while also encouraging them to build positive relationships with the local police officers from his DJ booth. For instance, at various points in the party, he instructed kids to locate police officers that were handing out prizes, which I see as an important means of addressing the community's fraught history with law enforcement. In this next video, notice how the community's actions are mediated by the house music. One gentleman is showing off his house footwork to the cops. People are enthusiastically embracing and talking with each other while others are guiding and consoling the youth.
What I find significant is that these actions are occurring on a street that experienced great violence and pain just a week before, highlighting the Bloc Party's ability to help neighborhoods cope with and address the issues together. Jersey club music in particular transforms the Bloc into a sensory rich environment that gets community members moving and sounding in synchrony, creating a sense of social intimacy and belonging. As a homegrown genre, the music provides an important sense of security as the reoccurring kick drum pattern is recognized as a familiar and cherished sound. Like the hashtag Link Up Tuesday events, dancing is a central activity, but the footwork is slightly less active and flashy, making participation easier for the youth and older residents. What I notice is that DJ Lil Man frequently draws from a set of Jersey club tracks that connect to black slide dance traditions to engage the community with highly recognizable and accessible music featuring instructions guiding dancers. This provides a contrast to the aggressive battle music heard earlier, which often features rapid fire gunshots and explosions, which are not conducive to promoting healing among traumatized communities. In this video, you'll hear DJ Lil Man's signature song called the Team Lil Man Anthem. Notice how he captivates and directs the youth by combining playful characters, banter, music, and dance. At the end of each individual block party, DJ Lil Man informed the community of the mayor's upcoming, <laughs> oops, sorry, <laughs> of the mayor's upcoming um, free outdoor peace and love festival occurring at the end of the summer. This large scale 24 hour festival was designed to occupy Newark Broad Street, the busiest downtown block in Newark. What I find significant about this large scale culminating event is how it seems to maximize and dramatize the local block party efforts to connect the community, address pressing issues and amplify the administration's commitment toward justice and equity. The festival showcased celebrity artists and local talent, as well as a display of street vendors and informational booths, highlighting the social and emotional support services available in the city. Overall, through this series of block parties, the mayor and DJ Lil Man capitalized on the local community's assets and potential with the intent to create reparative public spaces alongside the community. So what happens when Jersey club music happens in Newark? Despite the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Jersey Club community members regularly gather to collectively negotiate and articulate their contemporary Black urban consciousness, musical sensibilities, and notions of independence in an overtly racialized city. Counter to predominant media narratives that subtly and overtly depict Black citizens as targeted, confined, and immobilized, Black urban community members dictate how they move their bodies in urban public space, by producing sonic interventions and ruptures against larger systemic forces that threaten to dictate their lives and opportunities. Through their insistent rhythms and rapid footwork, these Newark residents articulate oft overshadowed narratives of Black urban joy, pride, agency, and empowerment. Specifically, by leveraging the highly participatory nature of Jersey club music and dance, Jersey club music makers engaged in a number of critical sound organization and mobilization practices. As DIY urban planners, Fitch and DJ Lil Man regularly reclaim, reinvigorate, and reactivate urban spaces often deemed distressed and disadvantaged in their everyday lives. Through Jersey club music performance in particular, they hack the city to make it more fun, meaningful and functional, one public space at a time. I think it is significant that they took matters into their own hands when they realized that public space was not working for them. 
They both sonically manage local level initiatives that encourage members of the community to redefine themselves take control over their identities and celebrate their blackness on their own terms. In the end, I find that effective black party activism lends special attention to the livability of the streets by enhancing a sense of security, place, employability, mobility, and meaningful interaction between residents. In these contexts, everyday parties are short-term projects with a long-term impact that demonstrate that black lives clearly matter. Thank you.